Today on Heavy Meta, we get weird as shit with Hail Spirit Noir's Mayhem in Blue. Today we're doing Hail Spirit Noir's Mayhem in Blue, and this was a really tough album for me to sit down and dissect, because there is just so much going on. A lot. There is too much going on. Probably. Which, we'll start with that. There are so many elements from all kinds of genres going on here. There's uh, 70s prog rock, you have like Yes, King Crimson, all kinds of things like that with the the synth lines and the organ lines and all that, that sort of thing. Mixed in with black metal, um, one song even has some Frank Sinatra influences, and it's just, it's a crazy, crazy album, so it took us a long time to be able to, oh, yeah. to listen to this and feel like we had enough to say about it cohesively. Absolutely. Nothing has created this much mixed exactly. reaction. Yes. And I'm not even just talking about specifically us. I know a lot of people who have listened to Hail Spirit Noir's last two CDs. You've got Numa and you've got Oi Magoy, both of which had some very direct Pink Floyd references, influences, a lot of 70s prog, psychedelia, but this one in particular just kind of cuts away a lot of that fat and goes off in a completely different direction. And it's it's not going to please everybody. I think first and foremost that needs to be put out there. Yeah, it's an album that isn't for everybody because it it isn't from it isn't really for me in a lot of ways because it's not focused enough. There's the my favorite songs are the more forward ones, like the very first song, which was coincidentally the single for the album, I Mean You Harm, is the most straightforward one. It's a kind of like a black and roll type song almost. Yeah. It's got a lot of like surf rock riffs to it and it's also got some really over the top uh, theatrical keyboard leads. Yeah. It's it's Absolutely ridiculous, yeah. but it actually does it in a very interesting way. It kind of reminds me of kind of a, like a more forward-moving Psy song. Yeah, it's very Psy-like in the use of the the organ parts. Oh, yeah. And the general keyboard usage. But um, other than that, for me, my next biggest problem, other than trying to do too many things at once, is that the songwriting is extremely disjointed all the way through. Other oh, yeah. than the first song, which I was talking about, because that was more structured. Right. But to me, if the farther you go on, the more random elements that are going on that just don't necessarily mesh, and the transitions between a lot of the different genre elements are just wonky. Yeah, or non-existent. Or non-existent. There are parts to songs where you can tell, or at least as far as I can tell, there were two completely dissonant ideas that were joint at the hip, and very awkwardly, might I add. Uh, there's a song co on here called Lost in Satan's Charm, yeah. which literally feels like two completely different tracks. It starts out with almost a, a very improvisational nature to the keyboards, and then by the halfway point, it fades from a silent part all the way into a really dissonant early 90s black metal part. And this, this doesn't even feel like the same song anymore. You've got some of the similar lyrics going on, but at the same time, nothing feels at all alike. And like I say, there, there are no transitions here in between any of the songs. That, that's the most extreme example. The song, the first couple times I listened to it, I literally thought like the, my, my copy of the album was broken or something, and it j just jarringly went from one point of the song to the other, or it was a different song. But no, it's just... You're doing an ambient part, which that part sounds like circus music, which is another issue I have with this album, is the generic circus music 
that a lot of avant-garde music ends up sounding like. There's only a couple of parts like that, but there are big parts towards the end. Anyways, the transition is just ridiculously jarring, and that's a recurring theme throughout the album. Oh yeah, yeah, the whole CD has that issue, really. <coughs> From front to back, you'll have these, these backbone parts to the songs, and then they'll just kind of pepper the side passages with little improv quirks, and those are some of the tracks on here where you just have long, drawn-out organ or keyboard passages with little guitar noodles or strange operatic passages um, or, or just complete detours into different genres. And they aren't bad. A lot of these genres, subgenre uh, detours, they're really good. You've got references to uh, Ennio Morricone's uh, Spaghetti Western compositions. You've got actually some Final Fantasy influences, I feel like, specifically yeah. from like the 6th and 7th one and some of the newer ones. You've got a lot of that going on, and those are those are really great, but the way that they kind of ebb and flow is, like yeah. Eric was saying, very wonky. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting ideas going on, so that's unfortunate. Like, the second song has a, a fairly long hang drum part halfway through it, which I found was really interesting. I've right. never heard hang drum used in metal before. Right. I'm not sure if it's a sample or... Somebody no, I, I'm pretty sure that it was actually it. sessioned in, yes. But it sounds really good, and I would have liked to see more things like that rather than uh, musical schizophrenia, so to speak, at, at times. And right. Also, another problem I have with it, despite all these ideas, there are long portions of the album that are just boring to me. The last couple songs are the worst offenders to that. They're, one of them is over ten minutes long, and... The last two or three times I listened to the album, I was struggling to get through the last two songs. I was on the fourth song looking at my watch going, yeah, this, I think I've heard about all I need to hear yeah. of this. And the, the biggest issue with this is that once you do finally get to the ending of the album, while the final track is not only a complete showstopper, because, let's face it, it sounds nothing like any of the other songs before it. Like I said, it sounds like a Frank Sinatra tag. Um, but it doesn't have an ending, and I don't mean it doesn't have an ending as in it's just very poorly composed or it has a really strange fade out. It literally just stops. Abruptly ends. It abruptly ends, and it makes you feel like you kind of waded through all of this and went through this massive undertaking, this adventure, and there was no particular payoff to it. And that's an awful feeling to have after listening to a full-length CD, one that's as long as this, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little too long, Yeah, actually. Oh, yeah. But... All that aside, there are some really good things about this album. Oh yeah, for sure. Like I mentioned earlier, the synth usage and the occasional odd instrument usage is pretty good on their own. They're pretty good. And oh, yeah. The first couple songs, they're very well done and they make a lot of sense musically. Oh yeah. Um, the production, excellent. Oh yeah, the production is, is incredibly Fantastic. good. All over the boards. You've got some really well and even mixing here and there. Um, you've got all these different... Uh, uh, comp compositions, all these different pieces, and all these very absurd uh, instruments just here and there, and the way that they're managed in the mix is, is actually fairly admirable. Um, I don't know who it was that, that actually produced the album, but they did a really good job of <coughs> keeping everything uh, really, really well handled. Yeah, it's very, very well done. I can't imagine the budget for that album was very high. No, not at all. And it sounds like, as, as far as their old CDs are concerned, you know, that they actually went out of their way to get this one a little bit better handled. That's kind of why I, I feel like I have the theory that, that maybe this CD was trying to look for a wider audience. Because this CD, as far as compared to some of their earlier releases, feels a, a bit more tangible. It feels like it's a little bit more narrow than some of their earlier releases. And while that might be a good thing for some people, I think a lot of their earlier fans might be a little distraught about it. It doesn't sound a lot like their older stuff. It just kind of has little little appearances here and there. Um, but like, I, like he said, like I've said, it's not a terrible CD. It does have a lot of good things going on with it. The vocals are good. They're yeah. extremely varied, much like every other part of the Everything. instrumentation. Oh, yeah. The clean vocals are absolutely <laughs> exceptional throughout. Like I was talking about earlier, the last track has some really powerful, very well-rehearsed and very well-composed passages. Just very, and I, I, I say this with a lot of confidence here, very Frank Sinatra inspired, very early, early, early 50s and 60s, almost like a crooned style of singing to it. Um, the, the second track actually has a lot of really mellow and very uh, velvety, very rich 
vocal passages that, that work really well with the, the low bass lines in the mix and with the hang drum, with a lot of the keyboard passages, and feels more like an instrument. It feels like everything is kind of sitting on top of it, and it all evens out very well. Uh, the harsh vocals are, while a little over the they top... They can be over the top. Yeah, yeah that's what I, exactly what I was going to say. They're very over the top, but <laughs> in this rare exception, I feel like they do work out fairly well for them, especially in the opener when, yeah. when he's screaming, I mean you harm, and you actually feel like somewhere yeah, there is an Italian man... <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's actually trying to give you harm. He intends to put harm into your earphones. He so. sounds legitimately psychotic yeah. when he yells the chorus. Yeah, there, there is some definite vitriol <coughs> yeah. to this CD, and, and that's where I feel like you can hear the passion kind of ebbing and flowing throughout the, uh, throughout the album. Yeah. Um, other than that, I don't have much good to say. Yeah, I know. I know. Eric wasn't wasn't as big on the CD as I was. I've been a long time fan of Her Hail Spirit Noir, and I'm a bigger fan of kind of the improvisational nature of albums like this. Um, it does have a lot of issues, and I'm willing to admit that. But if if you like avant-garde music, you like uh, you like a lot of that improvisational music, prog. Um, you like something that feels more like movements rather than tracks. I give it a shot. Um, but just kind of be forewarned that it does have its share of issues. Yeah, it's it's something you really have to sit down and focus on and and listen to all the way. Okay, every song is so different from all the other songs. Right, that, e every song feels like yeah. its own kind of musical journey, and no two songs are alike at all. So yeah, it's a very interesting album. Yep. Regardless of me not particularly caring for it. Yeah. In the grand scheme of things. Right. <laughs> I I think I'd personally give it a seven. Uh, I would give it a five. So I think we can pretty much even that out to a six. Sounds good to me. Good stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yep.